This isn't a question comparing last year to this year again, so I learned my Thank lesson. You. But when you came in and got rolling here, you and Greg, you talked about how much talent you inherited through five games. Has this matched what you thought you could do? Are you ahead of your schedule? What did you envision? Yeah, again, uh, really no expectations, but but really proud and pleased so far. Again, I said it all along. The the players that they've recruited here are very good. They, they did an unbelievable job. And it, it just goes back to these guys buying in, learning, and these coaches developing them. So just pleased right now. But I, it's kind of what I mentioned to a lot of you guys after the game. When you do watch the, the tape, I mean this, we, we can still get a lot better, and we need to get a lot better. But as far as the no expectation, but, but proud, very proud of these guys. There's been a, maybe a game or two where you said we didn't have to do a lot, maybe played some base, base formations. When you talk about getting better, are there still things you can add to the defense to make it I don't know, more complex or, or better? Sure, and that, that's a really good question. Th there is more stuff that, that we have practiced that we just haven't had to show yet. Um, so, you know, maybe that will help us. But overall, to us, it always comes back to fundamentals and technique. Where are your eyes? Where's your leverage? Where's your hand placement? How am I tackling? Um, so the little things is what I think makes this defense special. And that's what I think right now is making this team different, is they're buying so much into the fundamentals and the technique. So. When you look at things and say, wow, you're really simple, maybe we are simple in some regards. Um, but the way our coaches are coaching fundamentals and technique, I think, is separating them right now. And I think that gives us a big, I think that helps us out a lot. Front row middle, Dave from 247 Sports. Hi, Jeff. Um, Urban Meyer used to talk about how he would ask his assistant coaches for a two-year commitment when he, when he would hire them. Um, did you and Ryan Day talk about that at all? Or is that something that was brought up? Because I, I imagine you're going to have you know, your share of suitors after this season. I never, no, we never talked about two years. I mean, honestly, I'm just thinking about today. I mean, there's so much that goes into every single day. Um, sometimes, like, I haven't had time to shave. Look at me, right? So I just, <laughs> there's so much that needs to go into every single day, every single minute, every single minute, every meeting. Like, I walk around here, like, someone grabs me here, someone grabs me there. So just to think about tomorrow would be hard for me. I'm, I'm very happy here. This is, truthfully, this is the most fun I've had coaching in a long time. I feel re-energized. I love the staff. I love working for Coach Day. I love these players. Uh, I, I love coming to work every day. And, and I haven't been able to say that in a long time, but I mean that. Like, this is fun. Um, so I'm really excited to be here right now. And facing Brian Lewerke this week, um, <laughs> seemed like he had a pretty good year as a sophomore a couple years ago. He was hurt last year, didn't have that very good year. What have you seen so far from him this year? He manages the game really well. He sees it. He gets rid of the ball. He starts looking people off. Um, strong arm, can make the, make the throws down the field, makes really good decisions. He's faster than people think he is. I mean, he can get going. Um, I think he's playing really well. I think right now he's, he could be the best quarterback that we faced. And I'm not just saying that because it's this week. I think he's, I think he's playing really well. Just what did uh, Jonathan Cooper bring to this defense? Attitude, toughness, leadership, speed, relentlessness. I mean, I can't say enough about that guy. Like when he's around, you just you feel better. He just brings that that certain way about him that everybody feels confident. I can't say enough about that guy. How he's you know battled through the injury, rehabbed, how hard he works. He. he from the moment I got here, he's one of the most impressive guys. The way he carries himself. I mean, when you think of Ohio State, like that's the type of guy you think of. What is and also what's Baron Browning bringing right now? The way he's kind of developed to this point of the season. I just I think he's getting better. Um, the more he plays, the more experience he has. What we're really pleased with him is he's playing more physical, and that's the one thing that I think Coach Washington has done such a good job of. Those guys are hitting people, and he's flying around. He gives you a lot of speed out there, a lot of range in certain coverages. Um, and it's really been great to see him take a step. Front row right, Joey from the Columbus Dispatch. Jeff, um, Malik Harrison was a guy in, in high school who played a whole bunch of positions, safety, played some cornerback. Um, obviously, that was four or five years ago, but I'm, I'm curious with, with his instincts on the field, is there a value in, in kind of coming up that way where you're kind of a jack-of-all-traits guy at one point in your life? There might be. I think you can see a lot of that in some of the zone coverages that we play. I mean, he's got tremendous range and vision and length. Like, like, so a lot of times, like, things look open, and they even look open to me. But then when you go back and you watch that tape, you see him sitting there, right? And he's got this huge length, this huge size, and now the quarterback's got to kind of get the ball up and over, right? So I think his instincts, probably from playing a lot of sports growing up, just seeing the ball. Um, but, again, he's another guy, and you got to give credit to the, to the staff and to him. He, he's, he's improving, and he, he played really well last week. Uh, fourth row, right, Patrick from 
the lantern? DSP. DSP, um, okay. okay. Uh, you, you're going up against a team that seems almost more successful on passing downs than they are on standard downs. Brian Lewerke is really, really good on third and long. He's been watching them play that stuff really stands out about it. How do you prepare for a team like that that seems better in more difficult situations? Well, it's, you kind of prepare each week the same, right? Like, we want to get them into third and long. Just because they're better in third and long, we, we hope we don't have third and short. So, you know, we, we try to get them in those situations. We do what we do. Uh, we'll try to get after them, try to drop some zone, play some man, do some different things. But I think with the quarterback in general, what I said in the beginning is what separates him, honestly. The way he manages the game, gets rid of the ball. He doesn't take a lot of sacks. He, he doesn't make a lot of bad decisions. He'll throw the football away. He'll run it when he has to run it. And I think that's why he's playing so well. Just to talk about third and long, that's kind of hard right now. Um, but they got good wideouts. I mean, right now, the 25 is one of the leading receivers in the Big Ten, and their tight ends are big and their backs are good. This is a really good football team, well coached. Fourth row middle, Patrick from 247 Sports. Jeff, you told us after the game that it's not just the secondary, it's the, the D-line, the linebackers. The pressure that they're getting and watching – you know, Chase Young, Chase Adrian Martinez. How much does that make it easier on your back end to yeah, get those interceptions, knock balls down? That's things? everything. And th that's what I mean. And w when you have a really good front that really rushes the quarterback well, you're going to get interceptions because you're going to throw off the timing and rhythm of the quarterback. When you guys watch, when a quarterback hits his back step, if he can't set up by the time he hits his back step, we're going to have a really good day because then the ball's going to come out. Guys aren't even going to be out in their routes yet. And we're going to force bad throws. We're going to force tips and overthrows, which your linebackers and DBs will hopefully get some picks. You're going to force bad decisions, and you're going to sack the quarterback. So the way they're rushing right now and how well Coach, is, Coach uh, Johnson's coaching right now, uh, those, those DBs better be thanking those guys because that's why they're getting those interceptions too. I don't want to take it away from Jeff or any of those guys, but every good team I've been around that intercepts the ball, it's, everything starts up front, everything, stopping the run, Rushing the quarterback, rushing coverage tie in, and that's so important. Front row right, Bill from the dispatch. Hey, Jeff. Um, coming from the NFL, the practices there are different because you have a limited roster. Um, how tough are these Tuesday practices, and what benefit do you think this team gets from it? They're hard. I mean, they're really hard. The first couple I had, I looked at Mick, and I was like, man, are we going to be all right? And he kind of just laughed at me. He said, we're going to be just fine. Um, but they're hard. What makes them hard is, I mean, we're going up against our offense for a lot of today's practice, and they're really good. And when you do that, you compete at a very high level. So it's our wideouts going against our DBs. It's our O-line going against our D-line. It's trying to defend Justin Fields. So that's what makes it very hard. Um, and then we push them here. I mean, we do. And Coach always talks about toughness, and that's where it comes from. In my opinion, you win and lose games today and tomorrow. And the way our guys prepare here, and they don't, they don't complain. They don't say anything. And now that I'm kind of into a little bit of a routine, I see that. And that's the culture here. And I don't think it's like that many places. It is not like that in the NFL due to roster size and limitations on how many times you can actually wear shoulder pads and, and all that stuff. But I think the culture here, the culture here, I think is special. And that's what I saw when I got here. But you guys come out and watch those practices. They're hard. <laughs> what do you mean? I accept the invitation. Right. I'm hey, I'm learning. All right, I'm not inviting anybody to any practices anymore, and I'm not using any bad language anymore. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, uh, question about the, the zone defense. This this program, as you know, prided itself on being a press man-to-man -man defense almost exclusively. How effective has it been? How important has it been that you are using the zone coverage? I think you said all three interceptions on Thursday or on Saturday were. Yeah, I, I was wrong on the one. And the one we were in man, when Jeff came across on the deep over, he was in man and he undercut it. Um, so I apologize for being wrong on that. But I love press man. And if you watch that game on Saturday night, we got after him. We got our hands on him. And I think it all starts from there. And the one thing I love right now is we're getting better at it and we're getting hands on people. I just think you have to be able to play both because I think now when the quarterback drops back and he just sees four guys across and these big, long guys, and here comes number two off this edge, and here comes somebody else from this edge, I mean, it's hard. It's really hard. It's hard for NFL quarterbacks, and I think it makes it difficult to change things up and drop into different zones. And I also think during the game, if I told you to go out and cover a guy every single play, I think eventually you get tired. Right, And I think it's allowed our corners to play more plays. And it's given some of our corners a chance to make more plays with vision. Like the one interception we had in, a game, in the game when Jeff 
fell and tipped it. That was a really good call on their part. They had a guy coming across that snuck through the B-gap, and he was open. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, he was open. But playing with that vision allowed Jeff to see it come off and make the play. Uh, so I just I think they're really good compliments, if that makes sense. Uh, third row middle, uh, Dan from Lemon Warriors. Jeff, you were asked about Baron Browning before. How do you feel like the rotation right now is working between – he and Tuff, and do you see that changing at all as the season progresses? I think it's working really well, and I think Coach does a really good job with that. I think, one, it keeps him fresh, and I think that it's important to give guys roles, which they both have, and they're both, they're both playing pretty well. So I think right now, I think Coach Washington is doing a great job, and it's kind of like what I said to Coach Johnson the other day. He, wrote, he rotates D linemen in better than anywhere I've ever seen. Usually it's like, oh, gosh, we got three in, two out. Do we have enough guys on the – like, no, it never happens like that. So those guys are on it. And I think the players are great with it. They cheer each other on. And right now, everybody just wants to go out and win. And it's fun to see. You obviously haven't had to make this decision yet. But if you end up in a situation where you're in the fourth quarter and it's a close game, is it tough to make that decision, whether you're putting Tucker or Barron out there on the field? I, I think that's a good question. But I think that goes into what, what type of game has it been? Is it more run? Is it more pass? And who's playing what better? Um, who are we matching up on? Who's the tight end in the game? Who's the back in the game? So I think at that point, we talk about the situation and we get the best players really to match up with what they're in. Make sense? We've got time for just a couple more. Front row left, Doug from Cleveland.com. Um, before, we were just trying to figure out if you're going to be the next Rutgers coach. That's why we were asking that stuff. Um, <laughs> when you, <laughs> just trying to be real. When you were in San Francisco with Ryan, why did you guys connect? What, what was it? Well, I, actually, my relationship had kind of started before that with Ryan. Growing up, um, even when I was at Albany and he was at New Hampshire, we actually used to work camps together. Um, so those summer days, we would be out there. I mean, we worked at BC camp together a few times. We'd talk football, hang out. So we knew of each other. When I got out to San Francisco, actually, when I interviewed, it was I was interviewing, I think it was him, uh, Coach Kelly, and one other guy, just offensive guys that we interviewed with. So I got to spend more time with him there. And then once the season started, you know, we'd be in each other's office asking each other's questions. He'd say, hey, what, what coverage do you see here? What can we do here? And I'd call him and be like, hey, what do you think they're going to run here? So we just started talking. And then on a lot of the road trips, being that we were out on the West Coast, we would leave two days before. So we would spend a lot of time together in a hotel, just picking each other's brain, talking football, uh, sharing thoughts. So I think, I think there was a mutual respect, and I think we just kind of clicked, and, and here we are together. So you, it, Ryan was saying he knew you guys would coach together again. Yeah, I believe we'd coach together again. Um, I didn't know it would be here, but I had hoped that we would coach together again, and I'm happy it's here. And you said you're having more fun yeah. here. Like, why? And what, what is it about it that's fun here? And why maybe weren't you feeling that same way? I've, I've had fun in the past. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, I mean, I really didn't have a lot of fun when we were losing a lot of games. But I think it all starts with Ryan. I think the, he lets you coach. Um, he really lets you coach. He, he doesn't. He doesn't often tell you exactly what to do. He'll guide you. He'll give you suggestions. He'll give you ideas. But he lets you do your job. And to any assistant, that's probably one of the most important things. The other thing is he does, which to me, which a lot of people probably don't even realize, he respects our family and our time so much. And in this business, that's very rare to have a head coach who truly respects that. And what do I mean by that? Like, you guys could see my daughters running up and down the hall anytime you want. My wife can come in here and feel comfortable anytime she wants. So what that does for me is that just kind of it makes this job so much better and so much more fun that he involves my family and that it feels comfortable to come to work every day, which also leads to, I mean, look at the way he treats our players. Like, he's tough on them, but he does love them. And that's just not talk. That's who he is. And when you do that and you have a culture, staff, and players that's built like that, I just think guys enjoy being in this building right now. And I think that's why they're playing hard and fast and they're confident and they're doing it together. Uh, Jeff, I'm uh, curious about the development of uh, Jeff Okuda this season. Can you just talk about what, you know, what when you met him, when you came here in the preseason and to, from that point to where he is now, how he's a different player, if he is? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing with him is just he's played more, right? So he has more experience. So you got to give – that plays a lot into it. The other thing is I think he's – He's spending a lot of time listening to the why. Like he's starting to understand why certain routes are coming. When two does this, one's going to do that. When one does this, two's going to do that. So I think he's seeing the game a little bit different, and I think that slows it down for him. 
So I think mentally, I think he's becoming a better football player. Physically, I just think, you know, I'm on him hard. If you ask him that question, I probably coach him harder than everybody. If he takes a wrong step, I let him know in front of the room. If I don't like his hand placement, I tell, I tell him in front of the room because I, I want him to get better every single day, and he has bought into that. And I do think every game so far, he has gotten better. And again, I know you're not allowed to, but if you were to come out to practice, you would see how hard he goes. I mean, he goes now, and he's competitive, and he finishes. And I, I can tell when he's going to play well because Tuesday, Wednesday, how he practices, he gives him that, she gives himself that chance. And it's, he's fun to coach, which is, again, why I'm having fun because I get guys who are trying and giving me everything that they have. Is he, is he more of a leader? Is, is he is his junior now? Has he stepped up in the room? You know, he's more? starting to because I actually – you know, I, I gave the team a brief shot before I went up to the booth, and then he called them up. And that, to me, says a lot. He's feeling comfortable and confident enough to do that. He has those traits, but it's not easy, you know, and, and I think he's getting more comfortable with that role. Front row right, Tim from Letterman Row. Yeah, Jeff, uh, you know, speaking of Bokuda, he said he got a big monkey off his back two weeks ago yeah. when he got the first interception. And he said he owed it a lot to you about you were telling him just be patient, go out there, play your game, and those opportunities will come. When you see him come, was that a big monkey off your back also that it, there was a payoff for him? And then number two, I mean, uh, he seems to be triggering fast. I mean, what do you see from that aspect? Yeah, let me hit on that part first. When you get corners who trigger like him and Damon do, you better look out because that means you've got a pretty tough team. When you look at corners who are hitting like our guys, you've got a tough team. And, and I respect and appreciate those guys. I mean, they are selling out to hit people, and it is so much fun to watch. Yeah, like the line of scrimmage the other night. Yeah, he filled in the B gap on the one where we, we kind of weren't fit right, and he came dark. I mean, that's corners don't do that. And then they threw the swing pass out on the left sideline. Jeff came flying out for a two-yard gain. I mean, that's a big play. And there's a lot of corners who won't do that for a lot of different reasons. So you got to respect that about them. Um, as far as the interceptions go, yeah, let's be honest. Like, yeah, you, you, got, you get that first one, it's probably like, and then at the same point for me, it's like, all right, good, now he's not going to press. Because I keep telling him not to press, but you know how that is. The kid wants an interception. And now he gets another one, and then he gets another one, and hopefully they keep coming. Coach, thank you very much. All right, guys, thanks thank a lot. You.